Let's try again. Uh, just going to see how this sounds. And hopefully we'll get better. Any better? How does that sound? Does that sound any better? I'll try to make some adjustments to the sound. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, we get cracking anyway. Uh, hopefully you can can hear me and we'll just we'll just get cracking and hopefully things will uh will get going very shortly um and i'm just gonna work out now how to turn on the uh comment section so i can see how you guys what you guys are talking about could be quite useful to have that as well and how does that sound does it sound any better okay i've got the comments on now so and we'll get started as soon as you can confirm you can hear me all right so hello everyone by the way can you hear me can you hear me can you hear me loud and clear everyone there well i can take these off for a start um uh yes well it looks like okay good you can hear me and all right well hopefully the sounds a bit better now so, sorry about the the slow start there uh with the last broadcast um obviously technical things grandmasters you know can we can we learn how to turn on a computer just about but any more than learning how to turn a computer on is, is sometimes challenging um so what we're going to do um we're going to uh basically well i'm going to try to give you a free fun hours chess basically so we're gonna we're gonna have a, a lot of fun in in this hour maybe teach you a little bit as well um and you're getting a free lesson off a of grandmaster so that can't be a bad thing and another thing i've been asked to do by ichess for this webinar is obviously um i've done one course for ichess a 15 hour course on how to well basically how to improve your play when you have little time to analyze chess maybe you've seen the course maybe you haven't seen the course but one of the reasons i'm doing this is for the next couple of days you can see below if you click on the first thing in the description below it's the course is now on at 50 percent off so for a limited time you can buy this course that i've done for 50 percent off and then it will go back up to its main cost again and I'm really happy with the course I did. Maybe some of you have brought the course. Um, but, you know, this is something to try and encourage you to buy that course. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm gonna, I've got um, some positions saved that I'm going to throw at you. And one thing I always like doing is, is trying to get you guys involved as much as possible in, in the broadcast. So, you know, I'd love to get you guys involved. I want you to answer questions. I'm going to throw some questions at you. And the whole point is in the chat, I'm going to be watching the chat. I want to see which of you will be able to solve the questions in the fastest time. So who's going to be the best? Who's going to be the quickest at solving the questions? So the first position I've got, I've got two questions. So get ready now. OK, question number one is um, it's white to play in the position I'm going to put up on the board. And white has a way to force checkmate in three moves so you've got to tell me the whole three moves and tell me uh, how white forces checkmate and then the next thing you can tell me to get you know to really solve this one is what is the name of the checkmate now one thing i've done recently in my re research is i've been um trying to work out the names of checkmates and going through the names of checkmates um okay i'm also being told now that the audio is not so good apologize for that well let me know if uh you know let's hear some let's hear some feedback I, i've no idea why the audio would not be good maybe what i will try i might try putting this in a different usb thing um but while i do that i'll leave you with the first puzzle so it's white to play how do you force check mate and um okay well i've been told it's good so if you can't hear it get some better bloody earphones all right and another thing i want you to tell me the name of the checkmate that's maybe the hardest thing so let me get the let me get the position uh set up now and here we go who's gonna be first to solve it okay let's see there we go okay over to you so 
oh no i've given up ah ah i'll tell you what i have i tell you what i have done i gave away the answer there didn't i hope you did not see the answer okay we'll go back and um first little mistake there by me <laughs> okay uh, is it's white to play here and how can um how can white basically force check me and like i said i'm not so used to using google hangouts so it's going to take me a little bit more time just to uh basically get to grips with uh the technology here uh a bit more than than i normally do so okay so any questions come on no one solved this yet so it's white to play i'm looking at the chat who can solve the checkmate here and like i said remember one of the reasons i'm doing this broadcast okay uh don't just tell me one move you have to tell me the whole variation when you're trying to solve puzzles the first move is maybe not so important it's the whole combination so what is the whole combination another thing you should be looking for in tactical positions especially when i told you there's an answer is you should be looking for checks hello ginger ninja what a great what a great what a great name okay look for checks look for forcing moves and um okay well i'm glad i've helped you improve your chess khalid as well that's good to hear and i think the first person to get the answer is ginger ninja great name but what is the name of this checkmate this checkmate has a particular name does anyone know the name of the checkmate so the checkmate here just to demonstrate we are attacking we have two rooks firing down the g and the h file we have a knight on h5 so we need to try to force our way through towards the black king here so how do we force our way through towards the black king well let's look at all the checks there's only two checks there's either rook takes g7 or knight to f6 check now knight to f6 check is clearly the best idea the knight gets a very good position on f6 the black king has to move into the corner and now we need to try to get rid of the pawn protection in front of the black king so how can we do this well we can do this by blasting our way through with rook takes h6 and again this is a check it's another check blasting open the black king there's only two moves if knight h7 we can take the knight checkmate so black probably should try pawn takes h6 and now we can play rook to g8 checkmate and this checkmate is it's quite an easy one I, i've set up for you there um and the name of this checkmate no one knows the name of the checkmate no one at all what is this checkmate called this is a certain pattern with the knight on f6 and the rook here these two pieces it's not anastasia's mate that's a different checkmate we might look at later this one is the oldest checkmate in the world apparently this is why i picked it this is why another little thing i'm showing you here is just names well done um uh lee you're correct well done lee it's the arabian checkmate and well done everyone else who's got this one it's called the arabian checkmate now the reason it's the arabian checkmate is this is what you do with the knight and the rook and it comes apparently from a thousand years ago not from an earlier version of chess where the knight and rook were very powerful so um quite an interesting little checkmate there okay so like i say what i'm going to throw at you is a couple of these puzzles just to get warmed up see how you get on uh hopefully you can hear me loud and clear now obviously another reason i'm doing this 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 three hour quarter lesson i want to sort of help you out have a little bit of fun but remember only for three days now for ichess I'm doing my master method course is 50% off. So if you want to buy this course, maybe some of you have brought it. Give me your feedback, even if you think it's rubbish. Hopefully you don't. No one said that yet. I've very good feedback. Let me know in the chat now if you have um, basically brought this course. It's now at half price. It's 15 hours. It's aimed at those of you who basically uh don't have a lot of time to look at chess but want to improve rapidly and you can buy it there 50 percent off below okay so let's go on to the next puzzle and each of these puzzles basically has a different name so what i'm trying to get you to solve is not just the puzzle um but the name of the checkmate we're trying to create now the next one's a real beauty or of a checkmate i love this one and it's taken from a game of karpov 
um, Karpov, ex-world champion Karpov, had this position as white. Now, I'm going to show you what black played, and I want you to find the best move for white. And again, I'm looking on the chat to see who's going to be the first to solve this puzzle. So let me bring up the position now. Are you ready? Are you ready? Get ready. Okay, let's go. And let's go for it now. So can you see this? Here we go. Um, and hopefully you can see the position. I'm just waiting until it comes up on the screen for me as well. So in this position, it was Karpov with the white pieces. And here, uh, one of the variations that Black could have played was Pawn to F6. Now, Pawn to F6 is kind of a natural move because Black is trying to eliminate this strong pawn on E5. Now, a lot of people have talked about having a pawn on such a good square like E5. And having a pawn on E5 when you're white, I will highlight that pawn again and again, is really good when you want to start an attack. It was Alakine, ex-world champion, one of the first world champions, Alakine, who said when you have a pawn on E5, you should always be aiming for a kingside attack. But in this position, F6, trying to get rid of the pawn on E5, is actually a big mistake. What can white play here? And I see that Ninad uh, Milef, I hope I've said that correctly, Ninad Milef um, has got the answer already. Well done, Ninad. Well done. It's actually white to play here. What is white's best move here? Now, it might not be checkmate straight away, but imagine you're white here. Black has got himself in a little bit of a box here. And when you see your opponent's king in a position like this, you can see I've highlighted all those pieces in the corner of the board like that. You want to try to think of a way to open up that box and maybe open up the H file. And one thing you've got to do to get better at chess is to notice these things in positions. As soon as you start noticing these patterns and, being, and work out ways to take advantage of them, you will be... Um, can basically able to uh, become a much better player. Now, I hope you can hear me loud enough. I'm sorry if there's some trouble with the sound today. I'll have to look into that um, at another moment. What I might do, I'm just going to try another USB port because my computer's been playing up. But everyone else, have a look at this move, queen to g6. That is such a brilliant move. Have a look at that, and I'll be back in a second. I'm just going to try to try um, to sort out my microphone, see if it's an issue there. Okay. Can you hear me now? How about that? Can you hear me? That must be better. Okay. Uh, now, hopefully you can hear me. Well, like I was saying, I'm going to continue. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, and unfortunately, I've had some problems with the sound. But hopefully, yeah, we're back in business. Good stuff. Okay. Well, I mean, if you look at this move, I just love moves like this. This is why I play chess because of moves like this, these brilliant moves that for me are very artistic. Anyone who says that chess is not an art form, show them a move like that. And the better you get at chess, I think the more you see art in, in positions. And the point of this amazing move 
is that if black captures the queen, we have now got the open H file. And like I said, that king is in a box. It is in a box. So all we have to do is give the king a check. And that is actually checkmate now. Um, so um, this is a beautiful move, this uh, rook to this queen to g6 and what else can black do well black is completely lost here because we're gonna play rook to g uh rook to h3 anyway with a massive attack next move so i really like that checkmate that was uh that that was a nice little puzzle there but anyone know the name of that last checkmate so what is the name of that last checkmate and remember i'm trying to get you to get the names as well so what is the name of that last checkmate it had a name that is when your opponent is basically stuck on the wing files and his king gets checked by a rook or a queen normally a rook what is the name of that one someone had the name right earlier anyone else know the name now anyone else know the name what is the name of that check mate anyone anyone know the name well that one there actually came the harry file mate i like that one nice try ginger ninja great name ginger ninja great name used to be my nickname at school that ginger ninja believe it or not for some reason um it's actually called the anastasia the anastasia checkmate that one it's a version of the anastasia checkmate when your opponent's king is stuck on the file and it can't move the reason it's called anastasia is taken from a, a, an old german book um on chess i can't remember the author of the book but he he basically did this novel or the, and it had it had chess problems in it and the first time it was ever in print this this author uh, mentioned it as a checkmate then so the anastasia checkmate is when you do those kind of checkmates um okay let's go for another one so in the next one get ready again who's going to be first to solve this this is kind of like tactics hour we're doing here quick fast tactics Who's going to be able to solve the tactics in the quickest time? And we'll have a little bit of a sort of uh, a lesson after this. So just warming you up, getting the brain, getting the brain working. So in the next one, it's white to play and to checkmate. What is the best way to checkmate in the next puzzle? Now, there's a quite a lot of good moves, but what is the best way to checkmate? And before I show you the position, I want you to bear some things in mind. Number one when you're trying to force checkmate when you are attacking what you should do is always look for the most forcing moves first so look for the checks look for the captures and in the next position that's what you should be doing so let's bring it up next position white to play and how does white let's just bring this up now how does white force checkmate here so over to you guys now how does white force checkmate in this position so i'll give you a little bit of time to do it and this one has a name as well if you can if you know the name even better but more importantly how do you force checkmate here so i'll give you a little bit of time to solve it and don't just tell me the first move you've got to tell me the whole combination and it's quite an easy one this one it's quite an easy one i'd say so if you're a lower rated players you, you you should have a good chance of solving this again when you're looking for these puzzles in order to become a better tactical player you must get in the habit of looking for the most forcing moves first now um what is the best way to checkmate what is the most forcing move in the position now i see a lot of you are saying um bishop takes f6 well that is not the most forcing move because it's not a check when you're trying to attack your opponent as i said you should be looking for checks first this is a good move but maybe black can survive by bringing his knight into the defense of g7 here so there is a better move than that and again ginger ninja well done and everyone else has solved this look for the most forcing move and the most forcing move in this position again it's not a move like rook g3 and also bishop takes f6 is actually an even bigger mistake of oh, course cool. how did i miss this this is even a bigger mistake there's an even a better move than knight to e6 here bishop to f6 would allow black to do a counter attack with queen e1 checkmate so actually you'd blunder into checkmate there um now rook to g3 is an okay move but it's not the most forcing move you should be looking for the most forcing move 
And here, well, if you go queen takes g7 check, that is the first move you should be looking at. Let's just, we'll talk about how we can, you know, try to improve our sort of tactics in this way in a moment. But let's just see how this checkmate works now, first of all. Well, the black king has to take that. And now the black king has walked into a deadly pin. So again, you should be trying to follow up this move with another check. What is the best check? Well, now we can move the rook into the game with check. Black only has two options. He can't block the check because the knight is pinned. And if the king comes to h6, we should be looking for checks. Keep looking for checks here. Bishop to d2 is going to lead to a checkmate position because that black king is trapped. There's only one move, queen to e3, but of course that doesn't help because we just take the queen. And if the black king goes into the corner, we can then go bishop takes f6, checkmate. And this pattern, this is not the Anastasia checkmate as we had before because the black king is in the, in the corner of the board, but we're not checkmating the black king with a rook. Instead, we're checkmating the black king with a bishop. Anyone know the name of this checkmate? This has a particular name. This, this checkmate where you use the rook and the bishop has a particular name. And if you know the name, bonus points. Well, the name of this one is Morphe's checkmate. And this is a famous checkmate something which occurred in one of Morphe's games first of all that's why it's called Morphe's checks checkmates now let's go back to the original position now how would you in a game come to find queen takes g7 well one thing you've got to bear in mind when you're playing chess is that you know some moves in a proper tournament game you should play quickly other moves you should slow down for um, so when should you move quickly? When should you slow down? Well, at the start of the game, if you know the opening, you should move quite quickly. Not blitzing, but reasonably quickly. Save your time for later on in the game. Time management is one of the most important things in chess. But if you've built up an attack and attacks do not come out of thin air, they come out of particular reasons, a good foundation, and again, if you buy my course, which is in the, the chat below the video at 50% off only for the next three days, you'd be crazy not to because then it will go up to full price. I go into these techniques in much more detail. So do you know, it's a good chance now, one of the only chances to buy it at 50% off. But what you should be doing is when you're playing chess, you need to build up your position in a normal way, develop, do all these normal things. If you're an attacking player, when you find these crazy moves, it's only when you gather your forces around your opponent's king. And you can kind of, as you get more experience in chess, smell the danger. And you'll be able to work out when you should be trying to look for these forcing ideas. And that is a skill in itself. When you know when you should slow down, working out when you should slow down and how to find these checkmates. And again, that's something I talk about more in this course. But let's bring up another example of that. And again, we will try to go into more details of the next position, how we should do that. And the next one is white to play in checkmate. And I bet you a lot of you do know the name of the, the, following, uh, the following checkmate. Now, there's actually two ways to force checkmate. And do tell me the whole combination, not just the first move. So are you ready? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to imagine we got to this position and I'm going to imagine the build up to this and tell you the story and why you should be thinking about checkmating in the following structure. So get ready, white to play in checkmate. And we're going to now bring up the position. And okay. Now let's imagine you had this position in a game. You've built up your attack. What are the danger signs here? that indicate to you as white that you should be aiming for checkmate well first of all you have one two three at least four pieces attacking here in the center of the board and four pieces is a lot a lot of a lot of pieces attacking normally three pieces can deliver checkmate against the opponent's king but we have four pieces here the other thing you should bear in mind here is that your opponent's king is very badly protected because 
your opponent's enemy, your opponent's strong pieces like the queen are on the other side of the board. They're out of the battle, all of these bits. So when you're looking for the attack, you can't, you've got to remember not just to look at your own pieces, but look at your opponent's pieces. And here I would be looking at ways to look at checks, but force it all the way to the end. Now, I would smell that there should be a checkmate here, especially with a combination of queen and knight. Queen and knight coordinate very, very well. And remember, if you're in the chat now, I can see that Alan and Rizal are suggesting moves, but please tell me the whole combination, not just the one move. Remember, if you're in a game situation, you wouldn't be able to guess your way through this. You'd have to be able to work out the checkmate. You'd have to be able to see all the way to the end. Now, there are two solutions. So if you've sold one solution, like Chess Philosopher, try to find the other solution. There is another solution in the first position. So have a look for it. And remember, Nathan, don't just tell me one move. Do what Chess Philosopher has done there and told me, tell me each move. There is another checkmate. Can anyone see it? And what is the name of this checkmate? Well done, Tom. The name of this checkmate is the Smothered Mate. And again, when you chess is about patterns, and when you start to recognize these patterns, you will find it a lot easier to find tactics in a lot, in a lot, a much quicker way, in a much quicker and more precise way. Now it looks like everyone has got the solution. Well done, Ginger Ninja. Well done, Doff. And well done, everyone else has got the solution. There's two solutions to this puzzle. Solution number one is the typical smothered mate. And this is the checkmate you do with your queen and your knight. You go knight to f7 check. Black only has one move, king to g8. And now you only have to use these two pieces to deliver checkmate. And this is a pattern everyone should know. Knight to h6 check. The king has to move. If it goes to f8, we go queen to f7. I call that the kiss of death checkmate. If the king goes back to g h8, now we see this beautiful idea. We want to keep the, the king in a boxed-like situation, like the first checkmate we saw. How can we do that? Well, we can go queen to g8 check. And the point of this is you give up your queen, but you put the black king in a box. Black has to only take that with a rook. And now it's in a box. We can move our knight back to f7. And that is the smothered mate because the king can no longer move to g8. Um, so what else can we do here? Well, another thing we can do in the original position, I think Ginger Ninja was the first to solve this, we can go queen to g8 check straight away. The point of this is if rook takes g8, we have a checkmate one move quicker. But if king takes g8, we can now go for a double check knight here and this is double checks we're checking with a knight and with the bishop if king to h8 knight to f7 is a beautiful checkmate with the two knights and can everyone see how we can checkmate after king to f8 here how can we checkmate here what is the idea here checkmate here everyone see the checkmate remember always look for the most forcing moves what are the most forcing moves? Checks. So start by looking for checks here. I've been told there's no sound. Can you hear me, though? Can you hear me? Let's just check you can hear me. Hopefully you can. Um, and I don't know, maybe you need to turn your sound on. So SysPal is now saying, yes, the right move here is knight to g6. And this is going to lead to checkmate. Pawn takes knight, knight takes g6, and here we are only checkmating with these two pieces, but these two pieces take away all of the escape squares for the king. So a very nice checkmate there. Okay, well, um, so that one is basically the smothered checkmate that we just showed. So I'm kind of going through and showing you lots of these different ones. Um now we're going to do one more of these and then i think we're going to move on to something a little bit harder i kind of started off quite easy here but i want to show you after this how you should think in chess how you go about thinking in the correct way um now again like i've mentioned before and you have to you know if you're sick of my sales pitch you have to understand that you know i'm doing this for free and i'm hoping to sell a couple of the courses my courses uh below 
um through through this and it is 50 percent off if you buy it directly with the link below there um from ihs and it's a 15 hour course 50 percent off and the course is aimed at ideas like this pattern recognition how you can improve your chess in the um shortest amount of work possible now i know a lot of people nowadays they have jobs they can only spend maybe a couple hours a week on getting better at chess my course is really aimed at helping you uh, get better with not much time uh, that's what i've really concentrated on so you can go and buy that from the shop below okay next puzzle very easy one here and this is the last one and then we're going to get on to something a little bit more uh, uh difficult now what is first of all it's black to play in force checkmate so tell me how that is possible everyone should have a good chance of doing this by following the principles i mentioned before i'm already giving you a clue that you should be looking for the the, the most forcing moves what are the most forcing moves look at ways to get your queen into the position with check and just look at ways you can follow that up with another check this is how you get around to solving these puzzles so it's black to play and the first person to solve this, I'll be looking at the chat. Great. What is the name of the checkmate? After this, we'll move on to something a little bit more challenging. So, okay, let's let's go there now. And this, I think, is quite an easy one. But who's going to be first to do it? So, black to play. And how can black force checkmate in this position? So, anyone see how we can do it? Okay. Well, the principles are, Alan, um, basically, again, this is something I talk about in the course that you can buy below in much more detail. Um, really, chess is a game of patterns. And, you know, what a lot of people forget is that once you get used to certain patterns in chess, you, everything becomes so much easier. I mean, moves pop out at you. You'll find these things in such a quick time and chess just becomes an easier game so how do you recognize when you should be noticing these patterns well it's through training and it's through um certain techniques which i go into in the course but for example if you have this position you've got to start noticing in your own games when you're in danger and your opponent's in danger and again what i talk about in my course which you can buy for 50 percent off is to assess a position, you base it on two things. Number one, the pawn structure. So that's the first thing you should look at in any position, including your own, own position. You should always be aware of your pawn structure. You should work out if you have a good pawn structure or a bad pawn structure. Um, and what's, you know, what you have to do is, is basically look at the pawn structure first. And then what else is there? The pawn structure is the skeleton of the position. What are the organs of the position? Imagine the position is your body in as such. The pawns are the skeleton. The pieces are your organs. The next thing you need to know is which of your pieces are good, which are bad, which your opponent's pieces are good, which are bad. And in this position, let's just do, let's use that principle. First of all, the pawn structure here, the most important thing to notice is that white's pawns over on the king side allow my bishop to really really just really trap the king there so white's pawns are quite weak they're also weak because the rook is trapped in that organ is trapped it's in pain and what we should be looking is black is trying to think of ways to get to our opponent's king so we need to force entry through the skeleton we know that we need, you know in a very brutal way we need our organs to force entry how can we do that we look for the most important you know the most forcing moves first see if they work the most forcing move here is queen takes f3 check because we're forcing our way through it's a check our opponent only has one move pawn takes f3 and here we have bishop to h3 and i think i'm not sure who in the chat got this first but sis powell has mentioned that this has a particular name this checkmate this is called bowden's checkmate it was first used by a chess player called bowden but one of the things to really bear in mind with this checkmate, I call it a crisscross, and it demonstrates the power of the two bishops. The two bishops here are crisscrossing our opponent's king. But again, it really is by using these simple techniques that we can improve our tactics, our positional play, everything. And, you know, it really is two things. And one way I'd suggest that you improve your chess 
Blitz is okay. I think too many people get involved with too much Blitz, blitz chess. Get a chess magazine, any chess magazine, or, or a position that is static. Look at the position. And before you look at the annotation below, start getting the habit of looking at random positions that are not your own. And then do the two things. Look at the pawn structure. Try to work out who's better. Work out where the weaknesses are in your position, your opponent's position. That's the skeleton. And then look at the organs, the pieces. And try to work out which of the pieces you should be using, which you should be improving, which your opponents are good, which are bad. And the more you practice this very basic skill, and to check if you're right, you can have a look at the commentary below the position if it's in the magazine, and you can try to, you know, you'll get you'll get better at this. You'll just become much better at visualizing certain positions. You can do this with any chess book, with anything. And it's a way that I got a lot better. Then you've got to use it in your own game. What I talk about in my course below is the basically when you're playing an opening. You should know what kind of middle game pawn structure, skeleton, and pieces you're aiming for. How opening is not that important, but it is important to get you into the positions where you know what you should be doing. And I, you know, again, in the course below, which you can click on now, I go into that into a lot of detail. Okay, now I'm going to give you something a bit more challenging. Okay, the ones I've given you so far are a little bit easy. So let's give you something a little bit more challenging. You know, we've got to test you. So, okay. Now, this next one has um, quite a funny story behind it. And I'm going to tell you the story of this first. And we're going to solve this little by little. And what this is demonstrating to you, I would say, is how to calculate properly in chess. And one of the most, this is an amazing position, an amazing story, because there's only two pieces on the board. You would have thought it'd be easy because there's only two pieces on the board, but no, it's not. It's very difficult. And it just shows you how we should calculate. I'm going to talk you through how I think you should calculate and um, in detail and how you can improve your calculation. Now, Again, I would do this by looking at basic puzzles and trying to work them out without moving the pieces and getting into analyzing as deeply as you can and not superficially. You know, when you're analyzing here by just saying one, one, uh, one move, maybe that's a bit superficial. You need to give the whole variation and you need to double check your position. Now, the funny thing about this, it was first published in a newspaper article in 1895 in Scotland, the position. And the first question was given, it was given as a puzzle, and the puzzle was, um, with correct play, white should win this position. What is the most accurate sequence of moves, and how does white win this position? So that's the first puzzle. So we're going to bring up the position now and see how you get on. So it's white to play, and it looks very easy, but it's not so easy. Now, in this position, there's only two pieces, including kings on the board. That is the pawn and the rook. And white is trying to queen the pawn, and black is trying to stop that pawn from queening. It's white to play. Now, if white is able to queen the pawn, you can have a position of queen versus rook. And the queen versus rook is a win for white so white's first move is c7 that is pretty obvious now in the chat um how can you now what is the best defense um amiga seven gods i think if you um if you if you basically um click on the link below it should it should give you if you go to the ichess shop the link below, which is, um, will, should you lead, lead you to my course, it's quite easy to find it in the iChess shop. It is basically the ginger, the ginger method. And this will go into these kind of ways of thinking in a lot deeper way. So that's what you've got to do. Okay, while I'm talking about this, what would you do as black here? And well done. I, I'm, if you've seen this already, I apologize, but I know a lot of people haven't. So I want to sh share this with those of you who haven't seen this position. So remember, yeah, if you want to buy this course, please do go to the shop. It's at 50% off for a limited time. It's the iChess shop. My name is Simon Williams. It's the ginger method. It's actually 17 hours of chess that you can get. 
So how can black try to draw here? There's only one way that black can try to draw. What is the only way? Now, if you allow white to queen, you will lose the game. So let's have a look at black's options. Now, what you should be thinking here as black is the process of elimination. So before, before, okay, it should be 50% off uh, uh, Amiga God. Um, um, it, it will be in the shop somewhere, uh, definitely. I know it is. It is somewhere 50% off. So keep looking, you'll find it. Um, and if not, keep checking. It will be there. There should be a click on the link here that takes you there. Now, let's use the process of elimination. This is what you do in a game. Imagine you're black here. Let's go through the moves one by one. Before you play the move, you can eliminate the moves that don't work. So rook c5, trying to stop the pawn. That doesn't work because a king takes c5. So you can eliminate rook takes c5. And this is a very simple version of what we should be thinking of. Rook to d8 check obviously doesn't work because I queen and you lose now what else can i do rook b2 has been suggested by um ginger ninja to try to check the king here that doesn't work because i queen and let's say you check if i ever move my king to the c file i lose my queen but my king can come down like this check here here check my king is getting nearer and at some point i can now go to c3 because you can't go rook c2 check because I take the rook. I'm sorry if this is a bit hard, this puzzle, but we will get there after all. Um, and let's just go back now. And again, this is what you should be looking at when you're trying to work these things out. Another thing you should be thinking of, therefore, is, okay, well, I can't go rook d2. I can't get my rook behind. What is the most forcing move? Rook d6 check. And this is the only way to try and get a draw. Now, the next question to you here, what is white's only way to try to win this position? Imagine you're white here. You're still trying to win. Even though you're rooked down, you're still trying to win because your pawn is one way away from queening. How do you try to win here? Um, AD Hacking Productions. Yes, I have survived the, the fine gold um, um, basically uh, uh, thing. It was a bit of a tough time for me, but I'm back. And obviously, I'll be better. We, we all have bad days. That was a bad day, but I'm back again now, so it's all okay, and um, we'll, we'll get over it. Okay, well done, everyone. And now, again, this, again, is using the process of elimination. So imagine you're white here. You look at all the moves, and then you look at your opponent's best, def best ideas against it, and you eliminate the ideas one by one. Now, if you go king b7 or king a7, it's a draw immediately because black can pin the pawn, and next move, black can go rook takes pawn, and there'll be no pieces left. So you eliminate in this position king to b7 or king to a7 from your forts. Now, if king c5, you're putting the king on the same file as the pawn. So black can now go rook to d1, and it's a draw. Because next move, black is going to go rook check, and then take your queen or whatever you do. So in this position, as white, you eliminate king c5 from the position. King a5 is not a good move because you don't control c6 anymore. Rook c6 is played. So by eliminating the possibilities, you become a better tactical player because here there's only one move, king to b5. This is the only move to try and play for a win. And really, a lot of people think that grandmasters think a long way ahead, but I don't think that's true. You can do little small bits of calculation, small bits of calculation to improve your uh, thinking. And this is all you need to do here. Just do small bits of calculation using this elimination. Now, what, what does black do here? Well, black's only idea is to keep checking. And again, it's the same principle. If white wants to win, he can't come to c4 because of rook d1, and we've gone through the other options. He has to stick on the b file. King here, rook d4 check, king here, rook d3 check. And now the whole point of this combination, and this was given as the answer in this Scottish paper in 1895, white can now play king to c2 because in this position, black can no longer get his rook behind the king. Because if he goes rook d1, we can now take the rook. So this was given as the solution to the puzzle, and it was published that in this position, white is winning. But the funny story then 
was that um, the position there, and we'll go back to position in a second, someone wrote in and said, well, in actual fact, that's not right. This position on the board is not winning for white. It's a draw. And the person who wrote the column had to say, well, I'm ex extremely sorry for that. You're right. Actually, black can draw. So was this correct? And remember, this is the time before computers. What is black's best defensive try in this position? So it looks like white is winning, but black has a very crafty defensive idea here. Imagine you're now black. What is your best way to try and um, draw this position? Any ideas? What's the best way to try and draw this position? Any ideas? So imagine you're black. Can you stop the pawn now? No, you can't. But what you can do is set up a very deadly trap. Well done, Sis Paul, uh, who knows this one. Anyone else? get the right idea well rook b3 doesn't help i can queen or take the rook that's not going to help there's only one idea and the very crafty idea is rook d4 well done ginger ninja and the idea of this and this was now the person in the paper said yep you're right rook b4 is now a draw because when white gets a queen black can now force stalemate what is the key move here to force stalemate from black. What does black play here? So imagine you're black now. And this was the second time this is wrote in, you know, wrote, wrote in the paper. Uh, the person said, you're right, it's actually a draw because now black can get a draw. How can black draw here? Remember, you need to do a forcing move. And I think those of you who are not looking at the forcing moves, you've got the wrong idea. The whole point I'm trying to teach you in this lesson is look for the most forcing moves always. And here, Rook to c4 is the most forcing move because it's a check. It forces white to capture that rook. Now it's black's move. What can black play here? Black can play nothing, and that is stalemate. So I think quite a beautiful little idea there. But the funny thing about that was that then this was written as the answer in the paper for the second time. And it says, I'm sorry that in the first thing I said it was a draw. I'm now wrong. It's been clarified by John Smith, who wrote in that the position is not a not a not a win. It's actually a draw. I apologize. But then someone else wrote into the paper and said, hang on a minute. It is actually still winning for white because of another idea. Can anyone else see the idea? I'm going to go back to the position in a minute. And the poor guy who wrote this article must have felt like a proper patser, uh, a bit like me when I lost to Ben Feingold. What a bad day that was. It must have felt like a proper patser because then he had to write for the third time in the Glasgow Weekly Citizen in 1895, over 100 years ago, he had to say, right, this is the third time I'm wrong. You are right. It is winning for white because of the following solution. And let's go back to the position now and let's work out why. So white to play and let's use the process of elimination here. And again, I'm just trying to use the same techniques throughout my lesson today. I'm using the same techniques time and time again. The process of elimination, the process of elimination. What is the process of elimination? Well, first of all, we know we can't get a queen here. Imagine we're white. It's white to play. We're trying to win this position as white. We've had numerous draws. We cannot get a we cannot get a queen here because we know that will be a draw after rook c4 check. So by using the process of elimination, we need to look at other options. And if we do that, we'll be able to find the win. And this is one of the ways you become a better tactical player. It's white to play and win. How does white win this position? Remember, if we get a queen, we just looked at this, black can play rook c4, forcing stalemate. So using the process of elimination, what can we do? If we go king to c3, hacking productions, we no longer cover d1. So black can go rook d1. And if we queen now, we have the pin, rook here check. So we need to think of another solution. So good thinking, though, good thinking there, by the way, um, hacking productions, but use the process of elimination. We've eliminated queen. We've eliminated king c3. There's only so many moves you can play. One of them is a win. 
which one is it which one is it um okay um oh i see you have to go back to the previous video and i just okay that's that's really that's really annoying it is 50 percent off maybe you can post a link this is what i'm doing one of the reasons i'm giving this free free lesson it's 50 percent off on um my course um for ihs and you know this is only for a couple of days i did a 16 17 hour course which is really aimed at you guys out there who want to get better at chess but you don't have a lot of time to improve and it's aimed at sort of rating range of 1200 to 1800 and i think when you do this course you will jump up to a different level it's 50 percent off in the i chess in the i know it's in the i chess shop there is a link on the previous video on youtube in ichess if you go there now it's 50 percent off it's only for a couple of days and then probably that's the last time you get a 50 percent deal off so if you go to ichess you'll be able to get this course it's my method of improving in an easy and la lazy way at a cheap rate so do that okay well well done people have got the answer the right answer here is to get a rook and unbelievably white is now winning this position why is white winning here white is winning because of the terrible placement of the black king on a1 in this position white is threatening rook to a8 and that king is in serious trouble what is the only way that black can stop this idea well the only way black doesn't have any good checks here if he tries to do check this time white can play rook takes rook and it's not stalemate because the black king can move to this square last time it could not move there in this position there's only one way that is rook to a4 and what is the winning move for white now there is a winning move here it's white to play and win in this amazing uh position it looks like it should be a dead draw because there's only a rook each left but what you need to do here, you need to try and create a threat with two moves. And well done for everyone who's found it. There is a way to create a, a, a fork, basically, a threat, to, a two, two threats in one move, I should have said. Apologies. The way to do that is by going king to b3. You attack the rook, and also you open up your rook to come down to the back rank with checkmate. And there's nothing that black can do here. Black is either going to lose his rook or get checkmated on c1 so the poor guy who, who originally put that puzzle in the newspaper had to change his mind on, on multiple occasions there so i do i do feel a, a little bit sorry for him there um and yeah that was a, a little bit embarrassing for him um but we all we all make mistakes and this is a pre-computer day age now um like i say i'm going to give one more puzzle up in a second um now um before i do that i will talk about the course below which you can get for 50 percent off if you go to the link on the last youtube video on this channel that is a secret little link there by sounds it where you get 50 percent off my 17 hour course and the idea of that course was to try to teach you in an easy way like i hope you're understanding here and a fun way so i hope you, you will enjoy the course as well it's something i want you to enjoy and it's something that is really built for the busy person so if you don't have a lot of time but you want to improve it, it's so important to learn in the proper way not to learn in a bad way but to learn in the proper way and that's what this course is aimed at doing and um well um that is hopefully yeah hopefully you know if you're interested in that go and get the course it's only discounted for a short period of time now okay right one more puzzle to finish off this uh webinar with i'm doing by the way another webinar i won't have the same problems the next webinar as i did at the start on sunday at the same time so you can and that's the last day of the sale but you'll be silly not to buy the course now because I'm sure it helped your chess. It's got really good feedback. Of course, I'm trying to sell it a bit. But us GMs, we have to try to survive and do these free things by making a little bit of money now and again. But I will be doing another webinar at the same place here on Sunday. So I hope you can um, basically tune into that. I mean, I think this course, by the way, AD Hacking, is perfect 
for those of you who are about 1600 or below rating i think it will really help you get near the fm title it will make an, a big step obviously you can have to do a lot of work yourself as well okay last puzzle this is my favorite pawn harry the h pawn it's black to play and win it's taken from a game of um victor Korchnoi, one of the strongest players uh ever in chess so let's have a look it is black to play and win what is black's best move and this is a puzzle for the the i would say um uh stronger players of you out there it's a trickier course black to play and win so what is the winning move in this next one and this will end off the, so the point here is your h pawn is two moves from queening and again if we look at the most obvious move first h2 this looks like it might be winning for black but here white can play rook to b1 and the rook stops that pawn and actually white is doing okay here because you can't queen your pawn so by using the tactics and the way of thinking that we've already taught about talked about we can eliminate in this position imagine you were in the game situation here where you would eliminate h2 from your thinking because if you went h2, you can see, I just gave the answer away there, that white has rook to b1. So you'd have to try to find another move here. Now, knight to c3 is very obvious because we're trying to block the b1 square for the rook. That's a very good move there. Um, and that is, let me just see, is that actually going to do the job? That is an interesting move. But maybe, just maybe, White can somehow defend. He can. All I need to do is defend the h1 square. And I can do that now by going f3, giving the f2 square to my knight, h2, knight to f2. And my knight just about covers that square. So there's an amazing move here. And this is called a blockading move. And we've, again, using the process of elimination, h2 doesn't work knight to c3 doesn't work what we need to do is block the first rank we need to put a piece in the way this is like really you know blocking things in an extreme way rook to c1 an absolutely beautiful move and the point of this move is whatever white takes the rook with he can no longer get his own rook around to cover the h1 square so for example if king takes c1 harry go on harry this is h pawn h2 and we're going to go h1 queen next and we're going to win the board uh win the board win the, win the game you can't stop harry from queening if knight takes c1 it's the same thing we're going to go h2 and now rook b1 does not work because the h pawn queens just in time so i love this i love this move that Korchnoi played of um rook to c1 it's a really beautiful move offering the piece to two pieces but blocking the position up right well look again this is your last couple of days now and again i'm going to say it one last time uh to buy my course 50 percent off i'm doing another one of these webinars on sunday uh, I've got loads more stuff planned for that. Try to join me for that webinar at the same time. Um, I'm going to be, if you haven't seen my YouTube channel, go and check out. There's loads of free videos there on how to improve Ginger GM videos. If you just go there, you can find out, you can find loads of free stuff there. If you want to help support me, if you want to help support my chest, then at the moment and only for another couple of days, my course, buy it now though, is 50% off. Then it'd be back at full price. And I think it's something like $70 for 70, 17 hours. So it's about eight hours, eight dollars an hour, something like that, seven dollars an hour. I think that's really good effort. So I spent loads of times preparing this course. And if you go to the IHS videos, you can find a link for that 50% offer there. Go and get yourself a copy. It'll make me a happy man. But thank you all. Um uh do, do, do. Well, I think this course, this course is better for for those of you. It's a more rounded course. I would say buy this course, it, it, this, this method course, especially when it's at a cheap value. So go and get that course now. OK, well, hopefully I'll see you all on Sunday. And thank you for tuning in to this broadcast. Uh, sorry about the slow start to this. 
there will be a better webinar on, on Sunday. But thank you so much for tuning in and, and goodbye. Goodbye for now. Bye for now.